Okay, let's uh, continue on this trend of talking about auto-tune. Now, I've been on YouTube a, a lot lately and watching uh, one particular um, creator, uh, Wings of Pegasus. And what he does is he kind of does detective work that's involved in finding out if an artist is using uh, pitch correction or auto-tune. Now, auto-tune is pretty easy to detect, but pitch correction is something that no one can really hear. I mean, you have to have a computer set up in order to, and software in order to de detect pitch correction. And then a comment came in one of his videos, and someone said, you know, artists should have to do like they do with uh, food, like saying that uh, if you, uh, yeah, if you're gonna you're gonna sell a cake, then you have to say, yeah, this is made with no artificial ingredients. Everything is made is with fresh ingredients or yeah th this meat was is not uh there's no steroid is uh, grass-fed beef no steroids no gmo vegetables and stuff and this got me to thinking because they are right because i remember back when somewhere around mt when mtv came about then then suddenly, all the old artists, you know, the ones that came before MTV came up, they wanted to re, yeah, they wanted to put their music out there again. And when they, so if you had a, a, a song or music that you made in 1963 or 1968 or 79 or something like that, and then MTV comes along and then you say, yeah, well, I can re-release my stuff but then what happened was uh, something came about called digital mastering and I don't know if this was a music industry thing where they were just trying to be nice to all of us or if this was a government requirement or whatever but if you if you if you bought like an old Van Halen uh, album before MTV, you can get the you can get the you know vinyl, play it and everything else, no problem at all. But later on, as it moved up into CDs, then what happened was the CDs had a label on them that said "digitally remastered" because the vocals that Van Halen was using, the analog tapes and everything that they were using, they just didn't fit inside of the CD, you just could you just couldn't you couldn't get the range and everything else in there, and so they had to remaster the analog tapes into digital format. But they told you on the album, they told you on the CD, they told you on the cassette that hey, this is this is digitally remastered, and this went on for a long time before people started looking for music that was not digitally remastered and i remember there was one there was one um artist that said that she would never ever remaster her stuff digitally and that was sade sade said no if you want my stuff it's all going to be analog <laughs> you want to remaster it, it has to be remastered analog <laughs> and so then became this quest for people to go through the music stores and find analog uh mix mixed versions of analog and everything else. You couldn't get this stuff on C D, but you could still find a cassette tape that had not been digitally remastered. You, you, you could all, you could find other formats that were not manipulated by this digital manipulation in order to get them to fit onto a CD. Well, and then, so yeah, there's been a fight for uh, auto-tune is coming, and then uh, you have pitch correction, and then even worse back then, when the 808 kick drum, when that machine started taking over the industry, people lost their fucking minds. It was just, it was just ridiculous, because <laughs> not only were the artists really really just like no 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 
and the studios and the <laughs> and the labels are going like yes 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 yeah yeah that sounds great man but let's put some 808 kick drums inside there and the one person that said that he would not use <laughs> of all the people of all the <laughs> groups that said that they would not use 808 kick drums you would not think it would be grandmaster flash but grandmaster flash and <laughs> run dmc both of them <laughs> said no we are not going to use 808s you have a, a, a real guy back there you know get Phil Collins over there, get somebody, get anybody, Keith Moon, get somebody over there to play the drums, but we're not going to use it, this damn machine. And so, in that rebellion started another thing where independent artists, that artists suddenly started making music, not just for the label, they started making music for the label, and they started ma making music on, on another name, under another name or another band. Just so they didn't have to have this this manipulation by the label and by the studios telling them how to make their music. This is one of the reasons why um, people like John Mellencamp came about. First, he was Brian Adams. Now, Brian Adams, he is a uh, he's a brand. Brian Adams is a brand. He's got the music. He's got the uh, you know the soundtracks on the movies and everything else and everything else. But then he got tired of. It. He's like. <laughs> No, they are manipulating my sound too much. They are manipulating what I sing too much. They are telling me what how to write songs. And so suddenly, not only was he Brian Adams, but he was also John Cougar Mellencamp. Now, Brian Adams had digitally remastered and 808 kick drums and all kinds of stuff and all kinds of manip studio manipulation on his music. But John Cougar Me Mellencamp was the guy with the guitar that just sang straight into the microphone. I think we need more John Cougar melon caps nowadays. See y'all next time.